everyone, it's Michelle from the Prince William County Service Authority. Think of all the ways you use water every day. Well, the Service Authority is responsible for sending that water out to home, schools, and businesses in Prince William County. Everything that comes out of your taps and your sinks, showers, and even your toilets is sent to you by us. And on the other side, after you've used that water and it's no longer considered clean, we take it back to our wastewater treatment plant where we can clean it up and make sure it's nice and safe to return to the environment. Throughout this video, questions will pop up on the screen. When this happens, feel free to pause and think about the answers before you continue. Now our first big question is one that I'll give you guys the answer to, and that is, what exactly is a watershed? A watershed is an area of land where all of the water collects and drains into the same point, and that's usually a lake or a river. Now in a minute, we're going to use these materials to create a model of what that watershed might look like, but it's important to know that watersheds are all around us, and every single one of us is a part of at least one watershed. And here in Prince William County, we are a part of two major watersheds. Take a minute and think about what those watersheds might be. If you guessed the Potomac River and the Chesapeake Bay, you're right. The Chesapeake Bay watershed covers land in six states and in Washington, D.C. Using these materials here, we're going to build a 3D version of this watershed so we can see how pollution can enter and affect the watershed as a whole. In order to create our watershed, we're going to use some simple materials that you guys might even have at home. So if you want to follow along, you can create a watershed of your own and see this in person. So what we're going to do is take our two tins right here and we're going to stack up some cups. Now these cups are going to represent different features in our landscape. So these could be mountains, they could be hills. They could even be tall buildings if you really wanted to. And the reason we have two tins here is just to represent two different areas of the watershed. So what we like to say is that your upstream is somebody's downstream and your downstream is somebody's upstream. So this just shows that anything happening over here can eventually make its way into a different area of the watershed. Now to create our surface, we're going to put this plastic bag right on top and just sort of tuck it in around our features. And this gives us some low areas and some high areas, just like mountains and valleys would in a real landscape. Now the most essential element of a watershed is obviously water. So what we're gonna do now is just spray some water all around so that you can see as the drops start to form and get heavy, they're going to flow down with gravity. And this water also allows us to see the formation of different lakes and streams. So as water collects, it's going to form larger bodies of water. So now that we have multiple different water sources all around our watershed, we're gonna start adding some pollution to the model. So pollution can be anything from chemicals to trash to even things out in nature like this dirt right here. So imagine that you are at a construction site and they have been digging up a lot of dirt in order to build new houses but they haven't done anything to keep this dirt from flying all around and potentially getting into the water nearby. And then when something like a big rainstorm comes along, the dirt will start to move everywhere. And as you can see, it's flowing downhill according to gravity and making its way into one of our water sources right here. I'm sure you guys can imagine that the people living in the area who like to swim or fish in this lake are gonna get a nasty surprise the next time that they come for a visit because this once clear water is now full of dirt and construction waste. And not only that, the more pollution that gets added, the harder it is for plants to get enough sunlight to grow and animals also have a harder time breathing and finding food in the cloudy water. So even though dirt is a natural element, it can still do a lot of damage to the environment. Humans also add a lot of chemicals to their yards and gardens, so we're gonna add some dye here to represent fertilizers and pesticides. 
Now, as you can see, it's staying on the surface for now, but imagine that another rainstorm comes along, and this water is going to spread all of that pollution into the nearby waterways and help that pollution soak down into the ground. And where these people are, they might be using wells as their drinking water source. So when we take a sample of the water that's right under the surface that they're using, you can see that it's now full of these harmful yard chemicals. And this is not only bad for the people using that water, but it can also be bad for any land that they're using that water on. Something else can happen over time without a lot of human intervention, and that's the fact that the landscape is going to change. New rivers and streams are going to be created, and old ones are going to be connected where they were never connected before. This lake right here has been able to remain relatively pollution free over the years, but like we said, as the landscapes change and new valleys and hills are created, now the same water source that was up here full of the fertilizers and pesticides and other pollutants has entered the clean lake down here. And that's why we have to take care of the entire watershed because as you can see where it was clean in the first place, it's full of pollution now. Now that we've seen some different ways pollution can enter our watersheds, let's talk about how we can keep that pollution out. Now here in our model, there are some simple things that these people could have done to help keep the pollution out of the water. For this construction site, they could have moved the dirt to an area that was farther away from the water so that even if it was blown around a little bit, it wouldn't have gone into the lake. Or they could have put a tarp on top of this dirt pile to keep it from being able to blow into the water. Over here with our fertilizers and pesticides, these people could watch the rain schedule so they're not putting chemicals on their lawns right before the rain comes to wash it all away into their drinking water source as well. Something else that we can all do, it's my personal favorite, is do things like planting plants. Plants have roots that can help hold the earth together that not only stop erosion, but also can absorb some of these pollutants and stop them from getting into our waterways. Now to represent those plant roots today and their ability to absorb that water and that pollution, what I've done is taken this paper towel and folded it up. So just like the people over here that added those fertilizers and pesticides to their yards and gardens, we're going to add a little bit of those chemicals here. Now you can already see that they're absorbing into these plant roots, but just like over here, we're going to have another rainstorm. And you can see these fertilizers and pesticides are spreading out throughout the paper towel. But when we lift this up, there is no visible evidence that this pollution has spread outside of this paper towel root system and onto the ground nearby. So it's doing a really good job of stopping all that stuff from spreading out into our watersheds. Even in this small model, we were able to see how the water and the landscape are all connected and pollution can make its way into areas it's never been to before. And that's why it's important to take care of and protect the watershed as a whole and not just the part of the watershed that we're in. What are some things you think you could do to help take care of our watersheds? any questions about today's activity, email us at outreach at pwcsa.org. For more fun activities, visit h2gokids.org.